And Cam Patterson is going to join us in about a half an hour. He's got a bunch of sold-out shows over there in the cabaret at Hilarities. We'll get to the Bill Squire Friday Get Down later on. That's how we begin the weekend around these parts. So we'll get to that uh, shortly after 6 o'clock. Guardians uh, pregame will begin a little bit after 6.30 when we roll out for the weekend. And then 7.07 is game time up in Toronto against the Blue Jays. First of three there. And then the Blue Jays will be here in Cleveland next week. Uh, Guardians also be hosting the Mariners starting on Tuesday night. And uh, if you want to get yourself some appropriate gear from CLE Clothing Company, I always recommend that you use our promo code to do that. This month, the word is Cardinal, and it will get you 20% off right off the top. Got to order that shirt for Dick. <laughs> Make myself a note to do that. Might surprise you to learn uh, that it's not uh, top of mind for me. But I did tell him that I would send him one. And I'm a man of my word, so I should take care of that. Somebody suggested that that couple name their child Belle, B-E-L-L-E. It's not bad. I don't think a lot of women who claim they don't know they're pregnant are saying that because they were cheating. Yeah, but you're you're going to have a kid. I mean, she said she didn't know she was pregnant. You know, and I, I had some women text me in the break. They're like, I didn't know I was pregnant. Like, yeah, three months. One of them said three months. I'm like... Not, fetus is like the, the size. Baby. The fetus is like the size of a plum at three months, right? Like, yeah, I can uh, that I can see. And some women, listen, my middle brother, his wife, my sister-in-law, is a very, very thin woman, and they have two boys. And each time she was pregnant, it was like her body didn't change at all, except for it looked like she was walking around with a soccer ball under her shirt. And then she had the baby, and it was like the soccer ball came out of her shirt. It was like some people's bodies just don't change. You know, people go, oh, I know some people who got smaller when they were pregnant. Okay, well, I, I that's new to me, but, you know. Somebody else said my wife didn't know until she was almost six months pregnant. And like Mary said, you know, people, they're not getting their periods or whatever and all that kind of weird stuff. But again... It's just that when you get to when you get to but like right. to go to get all to the way through term. the pregnancy, yeah. Yeah. nine months, and, and not then know. be like, oh, I'm going to stop at Taco Bell and get some food, and then pop into the bathroom, and a baby comes out. You're like, well, I'll be. Like that's just like that's crazy. You couldn't have gone the nine. Uh, forget the size. You couldn't have gone nine months without feeling anything going on. I mean, that would mean like no, no kicking, morning sickness, no yeah, nothing, no yeah. butterflies, no nothing. Could I be pregonate? How do I know if I'm Prengan? What is the best time to sex to become pregnant? I mean, just on a logistical level, it would be a real kick in the pants because you can't plan for anything. You're like, oh, I've got a baby now. You don't have a crib, a right. car seat. Yeah, you don't have any of it. Somebody else texted me, I had two hours notice. I wonder what the notice was. Two hours, but what happened? This person should tell me. What happened that let you know in two hours? Because, I mean, you don't know when you're going to start going into labor unless that's a very cryptic text. I had two hours notice. I was reading a story. This is very sad, too. I was reading a story about a Vietnam vet who just died. And, you know, it blows your mind that Vietnam vets are 85 years old now. You know, my dad was in the army. I kept, my birth kept my dad from going to Vietnam. He had gotten his papers to go to Vietnam. And um, my mom, I was born by emergency cesarean section. I was a 13-pound baby. You want to talk about bleeding? That's how my mom knew. My mom knew she was pregnant, obviously, because she looked like a house. But <laughs> um, But she woke up and was, like, hemorrhaging in the bed, right? And so they were like, you got to get here now, blah, blah, blah. So they had to do an emergency C-section on my mom to lift me up. And in, you know, late 60s, early 70s, that was major surgery. Now they just go, yoink, baby out. You know, it's probably, I would think, it, you still got to cut you open, but I would imagine it's probably advanced to the point where it's not that big of a deal. But my birth kept my dad from going to Vietnam. But, you know, my dad was in his late 70s when he died. 
So these Vietnam vets are in their 70s and 80s now. And up in Albany, one of our bureau chiefs in Albany sent me the story. The Times Union, uh, a guy named Edward Ryan, uh, wrote his own obituary. He's a Vietnam vet. He was a retired firefighter. He's 85 years old. And, uh, the, you know, beloved brother and an uncle, nieces and nephews and all that. And he came out in his obituary. I saw this. You see that? Yeah. He said, like, uh, I can finally die in peace or something like that. Mm-hmm. I must tell you one more thing. I was gay all my life, through grade school, through high school, through college, through life. And he fought fire because on the inside. <laughs> I'm sorry? He was flaming on the inside. Ah, I see. That's Fire why he all. did it. Okay. It wasn't a hose situation? Yeah, maybe. Well, anyway, he's 85. He's passed. He said That's that such a bummer. He had said that he had been in a, a relationship with a man named Paul for a quarter century until Paul died in 1994, said he was the love of his life and that he would be buried next to him. I'm sorry for not having the courage to come out as gay. I was afraid of being ostracized by family, friends, and coworkers. By the way, he's referring to a time in which it was much more difficult to come out, mm-hmm. right? Um, being a young man... You're talking 40s, 50s, that kind of thing. So that's not unprecedented, but it's amazing to me. Oh, and this is- it's amazing to me how people can still feel that way now, which is sad, too. It is sad. Well, but there's still a lot of people that are very against it. No, they're, I know. That's what I'm saying. They're, they're, there's, it's not that there's no reasons to be. Yeah. It's sad that there are still reasons to feel that way And in 2024, for Christ's sake. And this is also when people are like, oh, look at how— there's so many more gay people now because it's socially acceptable. All these uh, idiots like, uh, who's that little whiny, squeaky? Ben Shapiro? Ben Shapiro with the dry, uh, the wife. The dry wife. Can't get his wife wet. Yeah. And uh, he, there was just as many gay people all along. They're just like this guy that they, they couldn't come out. By the way, so why is why is something inherently bad because it's more socially acceptable? That's all, you know, right-wingers always use that well, as a— because they want to say that they're not born gay, that they're uh, coerced into it by society. Well, and that's just—that's yeah. fully debunked. I mean, but, but the thing— But they is, don't believe—they they don't act like it's debunked, and they push no, it as a narrative. That's fine, but— But anyway, yeah. So in his own obituary, he said, I had been gay my whole life. The firemen, right? I mean, a lot yeah. of machismo in the—, in the among firemen. Um, his fire chief said that he had known uh, that Ryan was gay. It didn't bother me, but I didn't know how the old macho fire service would have felt about it back then, he said. Um, so obviously this guy got a lot of comments uh, based on this uh, from both straight and gay people. I'm straight, but this is why pride events are important and still needed, somebody else said. You know, people are like, we're straight pride month. Well, A, stop. B, uh, this kind of stuff. Because, you know, you show me a time where it was potentially dangerous for you to come out as straight, and then we'll have that conversation. But you live your whole life, and, you know, it sounds like there were a couple of people who knew, but... Um, you know, he chalks it up to his own, wasn't courageous enough to do it. And, you know, people who are straight can't, I can't identify with that, but, you know, imagine not being able to do what you wanted to do. That's the whole point of why people are, um, complaining about things like anti LGBTQ things. Alan, my Christian sister, thinks kids are identifying LGBTQ because it's the in thing right now. Some of them are. Absolutely. But so what? (laughs) That You know, you hear that a lot. They go, oh, well, some kids, they're still figuring it out, and they figure, well, it's really cool to be gay right now, so why not? Okay, fine. So what? Because some kids, if they're trying it on right now, I'm not talking about transgender. That's a whole other conversation. But, you know, I have two older kids in college, and they're aware that they have friends who are trying it on. And so what? 
because if it's not for them, then they'll get back into whatever their heteronormative situation is. But if they find out that that's who they are, that's what everybody's doing, by the way, when they're young. That's exactly what you're supposed to be doing is finding out who the hell you are. And for a lot of people, they're really fortunate to know who they are. That's a lucky thing. You know, I didn't have to contend with that. I wasn't like, gee, do I like boys or girls? I was trying to kiss girls. As soon as I got into school, I was trying to kiss. I knew I liked girls. Now, they didn't like me for a long, long time. But it didn't stop me from uh, trying to make them laugh or whatever. What's the matter with that? Because otherwise, you end up being 85 and dead, and you are never yourself. And who wants that? Alan, my sister's friend, didn't know she was pregnant, went in for stomach pains, and had a baby a few hours later. Hmm. My brother-in-law saw this woman every day at work, and you would not have known she was pregnant. Well, again, that's fine. I'm just saying that to look at someone, they might not look pregnant. But if you have a baby in your body, I'm curious how you didn't know you were pregnant. There's a lot of people you look at. I made the mistake of mentioning to a lady on the, on our boat some years ago. <laughs> I really, I really stepped in it with, with her. Baby, do <laughs> you ever feel something coming out? You want to stop it? Baby, do ah, I'm so baby, do yeah. Huh. Alan, you were talking about cardinals visiting your Wi-Fi bird house. Cardinals are supposed to be a sign. Oh, Mary's gonna love this. Cardinals are supposed to be a sign that a deceased loved one is visiting you. I knew that. Hmm. You knew that? They, yeah. Oh, That's that like they're supposed thing. to be. Bright red cardinals are male, so I guess it was your father. Uh, listen, thank you very Say much. Hi. It's a very uh, sweet sentiment. I don't believe it, but my dad speaks to me one way and one way only. Helen, this is your father speaking from the Alexa. That's right. My father was a man of the 21st century, and so he knows how to communicate with me is through modern technology. Of course, I guess a Wi-Fi birdhouse with a camera, that's modern technology. It is. It is. It's just it is. piggybacking on analog technology. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, Mary, do you think that that cardinal that keeps showing up is my dad? I mean, he might be. You did just go to his... Uh, if you saw a cardinal, would you think thing? it was your dad? No, I don't think my dad liked birds. When my mom and I were at the cemetery, you know, my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, uh, died when my mom was 29. She was very young. And I was eight, seven or eight when he died. So I only knew him for those years. But he was uh, he worked for the railroad. And people say, how long did he work for the railroad? You know what I tell him? All the live long day. Hey. But he worked for the railroad. So, any so many t- hours. <laughs> Take that 28 hour work, brother. <laughs> he doesn't need it. <laughs> Anytime my mom hears a train horn, she says, Hi, Dad. Because she thinks that that's her dad talking to her. No, I don't know that she, I'm not saying she's wrong. I don't know. When she and I were in the cemetery visiting my dad, her husband, way off in the distance, because her parents are buried there too, we went to visit my grandparents. Off in the distance, train horn. And my mom goes, hi, Dad. And she looks at me. She goes, see? And I'm like, yeah. I, I love my mom, so I play along. But, I, you know, and she knows I'm playing along. It's fine. But I was like, um, yeah, okay. I wouldn't even know what to look for. It's not like my dad, you know. I know that my sister-in-law, ex-sister-in-law, she and my brother are divorced. But she's still like, they have kids, part of the family. She had a conversation with my dad in the hospital room the week that he was dying. She had a conversation with him alone in the hospital room, and none of us knew what she said. But she told me later on that she told him they had a word so that if something was going on there, on the, you know, if there's something on the oh, other yeah, side. Password, huh? That whole thing, yeah, like yeah. Houdini's wife, right? Password. Mm-hmm. She did that with him. She's not a believer. She's like me, you know. But she, But we don't know. She believes in something. Well, maybe she's very religious, so she's got to believe there's an afterlife. Well, no, no, not my, not my ex sister in law. No, oh, that's who was talking to him. She's like, uh, "Hey, let me know," and uh, nothing. 
So, is there who, anything you and your dad like did together that you would? I mean, honestly, dude, it's not really about like, oh, I believe the spirit of my dad is in that bird. No, no, I, I don't think like, that's this what they're is saying. Something that I remember. Yeah, like a know. totem of. Yeah. yeah. No, I get it. I just wouldn't associate. But listen, maybe it is. Uh, you know, I'm not going to start calling a bird dad, but, you know. What <laughs> yeah. if your mom was like, this is your dad? Yeah. He's back. Yeah. He's in bird form. Please, Here he is. Please call him dad. My dad's been resurrected as a drone because mm. birds aren't real. Mm. Alan, I'm all for equal rights, but June is Men's Mental Health Month as well. Okay. It can be two Yeah, things. listen, every month is a dozen things, so it's, you know. My daughter didn't know she was pregnant until she was seven months along, this person says. Okay. It's more common than you think, man. Hmm. Um, let me talk to Dave here. Hey, Dave. Yep. What's going on, man? Hey. I uh, agree totally with the train thing. That happened to me. I had a grandfather who worked for the railroad, and it seemed like every time something like, Happened in the family, we lost another loved one, that there was always a train in the background, like when I figured it out, so. Yeah, I mean, trains are pretty pervasive. I mean, there are a lot of them, and constantly carrying cargo um, to and fro across this country, so it's a pretty, sure. yeah, listen, I think whatever makes people feel better, it's fine, you're not hurting anybody, I mean, you know. Uh, you know, that's half of it, too, you know, you hear it, it makes you think of that person, you know. So. Right. All right. Thank you, Dave. Oh, my God. Woo! Listen to that horn. Oh, my God. Oh, she's beautiful. Mm hmm. Well, something to think about. Why not? But that guy, 85, writes his own obituary and comes out in it. I mean, that's also a baller move to just write your own obituary. I think everybody should do that. Who's going to be able to synthesize your life in print better than you? You're going to leave it to somebody else? You know, there are going to be people who know you, but nobody's going to know you the way you did. And if that was his plan, nobody else could have written that obituary. But right. what, you know, I think, Unless it was I think a prank he was by gay. one of his friends. <laughs> yeah. He's like, hey, he's the obituary. I ne he never, never told us. he was gay the whole time. <laughs> yeah, of course. He was a confirmed bachelor. Yeah. He never got around to telling everybody that he was gay, but boy, was he gay. Yeah, like if the listeners wrote your obituary, there'd definitely be something to be like, and Alan was gay the whole time. That's right. <laughs> right. Yep. We never found out when his birthday was, but he was gay the whole time. We know when it is. You know when it is because you talk about it so much. I don't. You used to. Nope. Uh, speaking of the Army, by the way, 31 guns stolen from Fort Moore um, in Texas, I think is where Fort Moore is. 31 guns, M17 pistols. These are brand new, and they're trying to figure out who – Fort Moore, Georgia. Sorry, this used to be a, a Fort um, – uh, that's one of the ones they changed the name. God, what was Fort Moore? It was a big one, like Benning or something, right? It was like – anyway um, – they're trying to figure out who took two dozen brand new guns. That's got to make you feel good when the army base is missing handguns. 31 M17 pistols went missing from the equipment pool there at Fort Moore. I think the funniest thing is these are or these are like $700 guns a piece. So obviously somebody wants to just flip them, right? 9 millimeter M17s. Unless someone's setting up a really weird scavenger hunt. <laughs> They're bored on the base. Hey. You gotta find them. Find the guns. Well. He's got them in a garbage bag. Uh, <laughs> you only got 28. No, but these are $700 guns, and the base is offering a $5,000 reward. So if you're the guy who took them, you go, mm, I don't know. Do I want the 20000 that I'll get? I mean, that's if you sold the guns like retail, right? Anybody who wants hot guns, you're going to be able to get way more than that. You probably try. I was going to say, especially if they're from a military base. Right. Military grade. or You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So there's 700 pop. Somebody stole 31 of them, and the base is offering a $5,000 reward. Good thinking, guys. That'll work. You'll be flooded with tips now. 
M-17s are the Army's newest sidearms. Since about 2017, they've been using them. But again, it, these are the kind of things that make me nervous, too, because obviously the military in general is dealing with a lot of weird stuff right now. And maybe it's always been there to some degree, but it's all bubbling up now. You know, they're finding more and more people in the military who have a lot of, like, you know, far right-wing sympathies and things like that. So, you know, this is not unprecedented that weapons have gone missing from a military base. So, obviously, it makes people nervous in these communities, but it's not like guns stay in the immediate area. Happens in the MCU all the time. Yeah, things get stolen from the Defense Department, get used to open up the multiverse. Yep. That's no good at all. Uh, hey, John, hello. Hello. What's up, John? Oh, is this, is this Alan? Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you guys on the phone. That's okay. Hey, you know, grow, growing up, um, my dad always shared the story uh, about his grandmother after she passed away. <clears throat> they were leaving the funeral uh, there at the cemetery, and there was a white doe that presented itself. And it was just always like this story that he shared with me growing up well unfortunately my dad passed away at 66 uh, a couple years ago and uh, I was the only one with him uh, at three in the morning in the hospice room uh, when he died and uh, it was very emotional and I was on the bed with him and he basically died in my arms and I gathered myself together and uh, went over to the sliding door that um, basically went out to this little grassy field and as I did so a deer came out of the woods and it was almost a full moon that night i remember and uh it, it just came out of the clearing and into the moonlight and it basically came almost right up to me and i just stared at it and it just turned around and it shook its tail and turned back around to give one la last look at me and it walked away back into the woods and i i thought that was uh i don't know something out about that I mean, it's it's, it's it's definitely pretty intense, John. If if nothing else, I mean that's that's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you couldn't even you couldn't put that in a book and make you couldn't even make that up. It was too. Um, uh, it, it was just very not ironic, but just strange. And he always had a thing for symbols and signs. I mean, we'd be driving down the highway, and if there's a a hawk sitting on the you know overhead uh, power line or something. He'd always point out and make a comment how there's, uh, you know, what, someone's watching over you or that's a good omen or something like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Listen, better than bad omens, right? Uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you, John. Sorry about your dad. Thank you. All right. There's John. A big old doe came up to yeah. him. You know a doe, Mary? A female deer? Uh, like a ray, a drop of golden sun? Yeah. Yeah. Along that. those lines. All right, I got a break here. We're going to talk to Cam Patterson. He's doing a bunch of um, sold out shows around the corner there at Hilarities this weekend, so we'll get to know him. And I will also have those uh, Burt Kreischer tickets for you. Next Thursday night, he's bringing the fully loaded comedy festival to the Hall of Fame Stadium in Canton. So I will give you my last pair of tickets after the break. The Alan Cox Show on our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite smart device. Just tell it to play The Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. Our iHeartRadio Music Festival, presented by Capital One. Coming back to Las Vegas. Two nights. September 20th and 21st. On one stage. Streaming live only on Hulu. A weekend full of superstar performances. Never seen before collaboration. At once in a lifetime artist moments. You'll have to see to believe. Tickets are on sale now at AXS.com. Don't miss. Don't Big Sean. Camila Cabello. Doja Cat. Gwen Stefani, Hosier, Keith Urban, New Kids on the Block, Paramore, Shibuzi, The Black Crows, Thomas Rhett, Victoria Monet, and more. Don't miss your chance to get tickets to our 2024 iHeartRadio Music Festival. Presented by Capital One. Right now, before they sell out. At AXS.com. That's AXS.com. From the Mr.